Hey YouTube, how's it going? This is Gamester81. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to take a closer look at the Gamecom by Tiger. It's pronounced Gamecom, not Game.com, as a lot of people, a lot of gamers will, will, will call it that. Uh, let's take a closer look. It came out in 1997, and it failed miserably. And let's talk about a little bit why, why it failed, and what, what kind of makes it unique. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Okay guys, so here's a closer look at the Gamecom. You got your Gamecom Model 1, and you got your Gamecom Pocket Pro. Uh, which came out uh, a couple years after the Model 1. So let's start with the Model 1. It plays black and white, uh, and it's not backlit. So it's kind of like the first Game Boy, which came out in eight, uh, what, eight years earlier, in 1989, which I don't know why Tiger decided to do that. Big mistake on Tiger's end. Your adjustable pad here, it's, it's pretty flimsy. Um, doesn't really, uh, not very responsive, I'll be honest with you. You got your speaker here, it's mono sound speaker, it's not stereo. Uh, you got your stylist here. Uh, I'm missing my stylus. I got this thing for like 10 bucks uh, a little while ago, so don't have a stylus for it. Um, you got your buttons A, B, C, D. You got your pause, your sound. You can mute it, and then you can also go back to menu, and this is your on-off. What was kind of cool, a couple cool features about the system is that you could actually go online with it, which is really neat. Um, so that was, and you could do that through this connection right here. There was a separate modem that Tiger sold, and it was basically all text. It wasn't all, you know, there was no pictures or anything like that, and you couldn't play the games online, you know, which is which is lame. But kind of the, one of the first handhelds to have online capability. Even then, it's pretty sketchy. Um, you your power AC uh, adapter plug into here. You got your volume. You've got your uh, contrast, and you got what's kind of cool about the system. It, play, it plays two. Uh, there's two slots here for you can put games in there. That's cool. So you can play two games, hold two games at a time. This is where your batteries go. It takes four AA. And this is an internal battery. It's got a bat watch battery that uh, this is where it saves your memory. So all the high scores and all that good stuff, et cetera, so forth. The games look like this. They're small cartridges. There's only 20 games that were released for this system. It's interesting. The game titles, actually, I have five of them. I'll show you what they are. I have Jurassic Park. And they're actually not bad um, as far as tiles go. You're like, wow. You know, they even had a Resident Evil 2, right, for this system. And they had a Williams Classic Arcade, uh, which, you know, includes games like Defender, a lot of classic Williams games. I think Joust is on there as well. And then you got Sonic Jam, which I paid $4.69 for it. Uh, and this includes, you know, Sonic 1, 2, and 3, all in this little cart. And you've got even Mortal Kombat Trilogy. But this is all done in-house uh, by Tiger. Uh, and uh, their third parties didn't really get involved in too much in making these these games here, but they would basically plug in the side. Uh, another thing, it wasn't backlit compatible. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but the, this one was. This is the Pocket Pro. This came out a couple years later. Much smaller in design, as you can compare the sizes here. The screen's much smaller. It takes two AA batteries instead of four. You got a smaller directional pad, a little bit more responsive. Uh, this is your light button, so it's front lit. It has a light that's it's not technically backlit, but it's front lit. And again, you got the menu, your sound, your A, B, C, D buttons. Uh, you know, standard AC adapter would go there. Uh, your headphones would go there. This is a battery compartment I'm missing the cover for. Uh, this thing is actually pretty rare. And then you got the um, some games would go in there and your stylus would slip in here. And again, I'm missing a stylus for that. They always tend to, I didn't, always tend to lose them. But these things I've seen in box go sell for over $100. These are pretty rare. There was another Pocket Pro that was released right after this. Uh, that's not backlit, and those usually tend to be in colors. There's like orange and purple and green and blue, I think, and stuff like that. But uh, that's that's always interesting as well. So let's power this thing up and, and check it out. One issue with this thing also is a uh, problem with what they call ghosting. So um, the the frame rates weren't really quick enough, and it would cause kind of a blur. Uh, you'll see what I mean. They did improve that into this model right here, so it's not quite as bad. But let's check out some gameplay for this one first, and I'll show you some gameplay for this. Hey guys, so this here. is okay. a closer look at the Gamecom Model 1. One thing I didn't mention earlier is that this is actually touch screen as well, which is one of the first handhelds. This is the very first handheld with a touch screen. And it basically works like the old Palm Pilots. You got the menu here, you got your cartridges, you got your phone book, you got a calendar, built in solitaire, you can check your high scores, and you got a built in calculator there. So that's pretty cool. But let's check out, let's go on the games. I'm using my finger. You got Resident Evil 2 or Sonic. Let's check out Sonic. Probably one of the worst Sonic ports, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> and the music is actually horrible. Not quite as bad as the R Zone. <laughs> Let's start. So you get a chance of Sonic 3, Sonic 2, Sonic and Knuckles. Let's do Sonic 3. Uh, Sonic, Tails, or Knuckles, or Sonic, Knuckles, or Tails, rather. <laughs>
and it's very slow, probably one of the slowest Sonic games I've ever played. And if you go super fast, it just it causes a blur and it's very hard to see. But it's interesting that they fit all three games on the small little cartridge, that's, uh, that's pretty wild. Let's go back to the menu here. Yes. Do you want to exit? Yes. Okay, let's go back to Resident Evil here. Again, probably one of the worst Resident Evils uh, I've ever played. <laughs> Love the series too, by the way, but... Cool that it talks. But you can see the dots and stuff too. I think it's, it's all about the, you know, touch screen and stuff. Okay, whatever. I'm playing through a, a camera here, it's very hard to see, but you guys get the idea, it's, it's, it's a Resident Evil game. So let's check out the Pocket Pro, okay? Hey guys, so this is a game called Pocket Pro. As you can see, I got the light up. This is what it looks like when the light's off. Um, obviously it makes a big difference. You get the same menu options here. Williams Arcade Classic. Good games like Joust and Defender, which are great. We can do a uh, defender. Moves very fast. You don't have the blurring as much, but it's a classic game, nevertheless. But you can just get the idea. I mean, um, graphically, the system is maybe a little bit better than the first Game Boy, but if you had a choice, I would definitely stick with the, the first Game Boy. <laughs> Thanks for watching this review, guys. Appreciate it. You guys, take care. Until next time. Peace.